So before we go to the other subtopics of integration by parts, I would like us to do some couple of examples so that we can kind of get a clear understanding of what integration by parts is. So the first example that we want to consider it's one to evaluate to evaluate to evaluate integral of let me write it here evaluate the integral of x ln x dx so by the time you finish evaluating this example, you will get to understand or get a clear picture of how sometimes you need to make your decisions on choosing your U and your DV. So because of that, you are going to do make some try and errors over here. So that when you get a question and then you are supposed to do something about it, you know where to go and where to pick your things from. So having example like x ln of x dx. Let's assume that this whole function, we are making, we are making this whole function to be 1. And in this case, we can say that our u equal to 1 and our u is equal to 1 because when we make this whole function as one function it's one which is multiplying it and we can say that our u equal to 1 and therefore we can say our dv equal to x ln of x dx as you can see this this is not going to help us because Definitely, we don't know the value of the integral of this one. That's why we even wanted to apply integration by parts. If we know the value of this, we should have done it straightforward here without even applying this. So you can directly see that this is not necessary. So if you do or make this assumption, it means that you are going way, 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 way far. You are going way what? So let's see something here. The second one that we want to consider is to make your u to be equal to x ln x. Right? And then your dv equal to, let's say, 1 dx. which is the same as dv equal to dx. So in having this, you can find the differential of u because per the formula integral of u dv, as I said, always write down your formula uv minus integral of v du. Per the formula, we need our du and our du is equal to, when you integrate now we need to do apply product rule and the product rule is to differentiate this right differentiate this multiply by this and then differentiate this multiply by this so when we differentiate x we are getting one and then one multiply by ln x right ln x plus when we differentiate ln x, we are going to get 1 over x, then multiply by x. And don't forget that here is the u dx. So when we multiply both sides by x dx, we are going to get ln, because 1 times ln x is ln x. Plus, now, this will cancel this, so we have 1 and all don't forget that here is u du and we are multiplying both sides by dx dx so we are going to get dx so this is what we have for our du 
and then our v now we have our dv equal to the integral of dx and when we find the integral of both we are going to get our v equal to x because based on this formula we need v from it and this is how we are going to get our v and from there you need to do substitution into this formula so we are going to say that we are going to have our x ln x which is our u and then our dv is what dx is equal to now our u over here where's our u our u is ln x x ln x and then our v here it's x minus the integral of the form which is what our v here and our v is x and now our du it's what ln x plus one dx So from here, we need to further integrate this one, right? So when we further, we want to further integrate this one, we are going to, or when we simplify this one, what we are going to get is integral of x ln x plus x, because I multiply x through to open the brackets, right? or dx this has become the same x uh, function was given over here and we need to do another integration on it and when you consider when we don't choose the right values for our uh, u and dv we are going to go and repeat 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 of which we will come to repeated functions as well as one of the subtopics of integration by part you come there so looking at this one we can see that this integral seems more complicated than this original one given right because it's more or less x ln x plus additional x which is more complicated than the one given over here so in view of this we will have to reconsider our values that or our variables or our functions that we assign for dv and then our u therefore we are supposed to go to the next trial so now the next trial is that we have our function to be integral of x ln x dx and since you have an integral of x ln x to dx, we need to make the right decision. And remember that I told you that mostly give u to the function of which when you differentiate, you'll be reducing the power. And when you look at this one, you can see that when you give u equal to x, we will be able to even um, reduce the power and then do whatever you want to do but let's look at something here when we give u equal to x and when we give dv equal to ln x that also becomes a whole problem and this is because we don't have the integ integral of ln x already because we know that the differential of ln x is equal to 1 over x but the integral of ln x also is also another thing that we need to consider it's a whole process on its own so in this case when we consider the assumptions that i made earlier on that you need to give u to the one the function that's the power should be decreasing sometimes you also run to a, lot, a little bit of difficulty 
So based on that, if you are using TI calculator, fine, you can use the TI calculator to punch integral of Linux and then it will help you go straight away. But if you are using your hand and your head to do that, then reconsider assigning the values well and therefore the final choice you would like to make is that when I choose you to be lin x, I'll be able to differentiate you easily without asking for any help anywhere. So that's emphasize the point that always choose you for functions that can be easily differentiated and choose v for functions that can be easily dv for functions that can be easily integrated. And therefore, we can say that lin x is easy to differentiate. And then dv, dv, which is equal to x dx, will be easy to integrate. And therefore, this choice will help us come out with whatever you want to come out with. Now we have our ju, but we don't have our du. So finding our du, differentiating our lin x, we are going to get 1 over x dx. And finding our v by integrating both, so we are going to get x squared over 2, which is equal to v. Putting it into the formula, we are going to get integral of x ln x dx is equal to ln x, which is u, u multiplied by the v, it's x squared over 2, which is here, minus the integral of x squared over 2 multiplied by 1 over x dx. We can see that we can reduce the power over here. And therefore, the resultant answer would be like ln x, x squared over 2 minus integral of x over 2 dx. And you can see that this one is easy to integrate. So in doing that, you are going to get your final answer to be x squared over 2 ln x minus x squared over 2 into bracket 1 plus 1, which is the power because we need a 1 plus 1 here, be 2. And then after that, you must be called, remember there is a 2 here. So at the end of the day, you are going to get x squared over 2 ln x minus x squared over 4 because 1 plus 1 is 2 times 2 is 4. Don't forget it's indefinite integral, therefore plus your c. You can check this by differentiating to see whether you are going to get your x ln x. So I'll leave that one to you for you to do to confirm your answer. So now we can say that the choice of your u and dv will allow you to evaluate this integral. And this is very crucial as you go on or as you learn in your calculus, in your calculus class. So now I know, I hope that you understand or you have gotten a clear understanding of how to choose your u and your dv and how to go about solving some um, some integration by part question.